Hey guys, what's up, what's going on? Welcome to my Game of Legends Rise of Champions hero tier list. So I've got a tier list with color coordination, depending on the uh, rating that they've been given in the certain category. I've got a graphic representation, so you can get an idea of the entire tier list more quickly just by looking at the hero icons. And then I've got another tier list that's just, in my opinion, easier to read down here. I'll give a link to this um, Google Sheet in the description of the video down below if you want to take a closer look at it. So let's just take a look at all of the heroes now. First, in the S plus tier, we have Nar and Tyra, I believe, are the best heroes in the game because they focus really on single target damage. Tyra's got good energy generation. Nar's got really good damage. Tyra also has really good damage. And AoE heroes, I believe, are a step below the single target heroes, at least so far in the game, because there's not really a lot of AoE PvP going on. Maybe when the meta shifts, once we get towards the end game, after the game actually launches, then the AoE heroes will uh, rise up in the tier list, and I'll have to make a new tier list at that point. But currently, as it stands, I believe single target damage heroes are performing much better in PvP currently. So. That's why we have Nar and Tyra in the S plus tier by themselves. Nar has really good damage. His first skill does anywhere between 1200 and 2400 damage. His second skill has a 15% chance to do 1200 damage, which means 1.5 times out of 10 strikes you'll deal 1200 additional damage. So that may sound like a low chance to a lot of you, but it's actually pretty good. It's like, you know, it happens more often than the skill cast happens as long as you, as long as you don't have extra energy generation from any source. This will happen 1.5 times out of 10. His main skill will happen 1 times out of 10 swings. And then his third ability, 20% chance to increase troop attack by 50% for 33 turns, so it's just more damage. And then his last ability, 10% skill damage. And then Dark Tide damage as well. So he just, all of his kit helps him do more damage. And then Tyra is pretty much there too. Her first ability either does 900 damage or 1800 damage. And if it only does 900, then it also deals a stun. Her second ability is really good debuffs, like S or S plus tier debuffs. 10% skill damage and really good energy generation on her last ability. Unfortunately, I haven't unlocked that one yet. Hopefully soon. And then her artifact provides stuns. And I forgot to mention, Nar's artifact does even more damage. So Nar just does huge damage. He might be the highest single target damage hero in the game. Actually, I'm pretty sure he is. And then Tyra is pretty close there too, but a step below Nar for sure. So they're sharing the S plus tier by themselves. And then in the S tier, we've got Tribolet. Tribolet is probably the best debuffer in the game. If you have him set up in a support army along with your main army. Uh, so for example, you would have like Tribolet le leading using the, his support talent tree with Rosa secondary. And that would be your supportive army. The support tree from Tribolet adds a lot of healing. So it'll increase Rosa's healing by a great amount. But... Most of that healing from the uh, support tree only applies to your own troops, so you'll have a really tanky support unit which can support your main army, which which could be, in my opinion, Nar Tyra would be a really good combination of heroes to lead your main army, and then Triple A Rosa would be a really good supportive army to run alongside that army, just to support them. So we've got Triple A Durs Rosa in the S tier. Rosa's in here just because she's the only hero that can provide healing for other armies besides her own. Durs is probably the best epic hero. I almost put Rinna and maybe even Galahad in the S tier. They're also epic heroes. Rinna's really good. Galahad's really good for epic heroes. I'm, I might make a new tier list in the future, and if I do, Rinna and Galahad might be in the S tier, along with Durs, Rosa, and Tribule. But they're not in there now, because I think they're a little bit worse than Durs. Durs is just a really good damage-dealing hero. And then down in the A tier, we've got... The first one is Torment Iron Might. 
He would be an S plus tier if we were only talking about um, Garrison. Garrison S plus tier for Torment. Because that's really his strong suit, but that's the only thing that he's good at, which is why I put him all the way down in the A tier. Because he only has one strength. It's just being in the garrison and defending your stronghold. It's really the only thing he's good at, so that earns him a spot in the A tier, in my opinion. And then Zekker is in the A tier because she does AoE damage, and I believe that's not very good at this point in the game. If we're talking about endgame meta, Zekker probably would be S tier, because I imagine in the end game there's going to be a lot of field fighting, and AoE is going to be much more beneficial, but... That's not for a long time from now, and we're talking about now, and we're talking about early game, mid game, and you know, we're in the beta of the game, so it's like we can't even really talk about end game yet, especially because we don't even know what the end game is going to look like. We don't even know what the KVK in this game is going to look like, or any of the end game at all. So, you know, it's hard to it's hard to judge what the end game is going to look like, but I imagine probably Zekker in the future will be bumped up to probably S or maybe even S plus tier, depending on how the meta turns out in the long run. But for now, I see AoE heroes in this game having limited effectiveness because there's not a lot of field fighting going on. So single target heroes um, just are more effective right now. So that's why Zekker is in the A tier currently, but she is the best AoE hero in the game. She's got 15-15 for flying units. She's got good AoE damage on her first skill. And then she's got 20% chance for up to one allied troops to gain 5% increased normal attack damage. Yep, so she buffs other people's attack damage while buffing her own attack damage with a chance to proc. She's got march speed, normal attack damage. Yeah, she's not really all that great, honestly. For AoE damage, yeah, she's good. For flying units, yeah, she's good. She has the flying talent tree as well. But she's got to be placed in the S in the uh, A tier, excuse me. She's got to be placed in the A tier for now, definitely. Korgash is down there with her. Korgash is a decent garrison commander. Not nearly as good as Torment, I think. He's alright. He's got AoE damage. He's really not super great, actually, honestly. Let's just take a look at him real quick. Take a look at his maxed out first skill. It's like really low AoE damage. Not impressive at all. Then his secondary skill is actually kind of crazy. But it, how long does this skill even activate? It doesn't even say. Okay, last three turns. So if you have him in your garrison, he has a 25% chance to increase your garrison's attack by... 80% Oh, 50% chance at level 10 to increase garrison attack by 80% for 3 turns. So yeah, he's really really good in the garrison. I I guess your best bet for garrison would be Torment primary, Korgash secondary. And then his artifact, I forget what it does. Uh just more damage, more AoE damage. Yeah, he's definitely good in the garrison, but that's all he's good at. So he earns a spot in the A tier. I uh, I didn't have a icon for Willow Howl. This is supposed to be Willow Howl. This is supposed to be um, Dumber and Dumber. Willow Howl, Dumber and Dumber. So Willow Howl. Let's see. He's got really good shields. Um, I haven't had an opportunity really to try him out myself yet because I haven't leveled him up at all, and I don't have extra um, tomes of knowledge to uh, get his skills up. But I'm kind of confused about his primary skill. I don't know why it says energy 2000. I guess it costs more energy than the other hero's skill to use, I guess. But, um, so this skill is kind of weird. It's definitely unique and different. Willow, Willow Howl gains a powerful shield for one turn when his HP drops below 15% and heals all of his slightly wounded units. Also increases his counterattack damage. So, <clears> hmm. <throat> It seems like, by the wording of this skill, it seems like it only procs once he hits 15% health. And so it's not like every 10 swings you get an ability. So it seems like it 
it loses a lot of its effectiveness compared to other heroes, you know? Like, heroes are, are casting their skills constantly every 10 swings-ish, depending on how much energy regeneration you have. Um, but this skill only procs at 15% health, so I feel like it has to have decreased effectiveness compared to other heroes, unless it's super OP. Maybe once you hit 15%, it, like, totally heals you all the way up to full. Um, or, no, it gives you a huge, huge shield. Sorry, it doesn't heal you, it shields you. Maybe it's, like, just a massive shield. Oh, and heals. Never mind, it shields and heals. Yeah, maybe it's OP. I don't know. Maybe it's huge. But um, his artifact effect is super huge. Once you fall below 40% health, immediately restores all health. This skill can only be triggered once per battle. I'm wondering if you can trigger this ability, run your troops away to where the combat ends, and then just go back into the fight, and then you can get it again. Because if that's the case, then this is super OP and broken. Um, as long as you can get enough march speed on him to even escape your opponents. So maybe if you paired him with like Roland or some uh, hero who's got a lot of march speed, you could try that out and see if it works. But um, we put Willow Howl in the A tier. He's got the best shields in the game. He's super defensive. He's an infantry hero. So you'll pair him with infantry and you'll be super, super defensive. But he doesn't do good damage. Um... His only real strength is defense and survivability. He's got a shield on his third skill. Damage to Dark Tide. Decreases damage taken. So he's really tanky, but you know. I don't know if I would really want to invest in a hero whose only strength is being tanky. Because when you you know, when you're in battle, you gotta kill enemies in order to gain progress. And, you know, being on the field and just being tanky and surviving can be nice. But if you can't kill your opponent, then I don't see that being highly effective. So I put him down in the A tier, but, you know, I haven't gotten to try him out yet very much. Or actually at all. So he might be more effective than I think. Um, it's really going to take more time. But I'm just, I just want to get this tier list out here now. And then when I feel like I need to make another tier list because things have changed, my opinions have changed, then I'll do that. But for now, he's going in the A tier. And then we've got Zargon in the A tier as well. Because he really... He's like an all-rounder. He has decent single target damage. Decent AoE damage. Um, his artifact is pretty good. It gives a uh, um, damage reduction. He has Dark Tide damage, so he's good in PvE. He has a good buff. He has a really, really strong buff right here. Or debuff, I mean. He's a cavalry hero. But he doesn't really have any big strength. He doesn't have big single target damage. He doesn't have big AoE damage. He doesn't... Um, well, his debuffs are really, really good. I, I would say his debuffs are S plus tier, probably. Let's see, what did I put his debuffs at? S plus tier, yeah. He's really mobile. But he doesn't really excel at anything, so I put him in the A tier. If he had higher single target damage or AoE damage or something... I might have moved him up to the S tier. Let's see, is there any other key heroes that are really worth talking about? You, like I said, the links to this will be down in the description below. So if you want to take a closer look, you can always go to the link and take a closer look for yourself. But I just want to talk about a couple of heroes that really stand out to me. Um, you've got all of your gathering commanders down here in the B tier, just because, you know, all they really do is gather. And then I put Murbit up in the A tier because he's just a bit better than all of the other gatherers. Um, Ashira's got good AoE. But, you know, she's an epic hero, so it's not fantastic AoE. And the uh, she shoots her AoE out in a rectangle in front of her, so I, I can imagine that you can easily miss your targets with her AoE damage. Asa might earn a spot in the S tier. Um... I don't know who you, you would pair her with because I imagine I'll want to pair Tribule and Rosa as my supportive army, probably. And then Asa is like a good supportive... Maybe Ashira, Asa. Um, just because they're both missile, uh, missile unit heroes. But Asa is really interesting because she has a really strong disarm debuff. And then her artifact weapon also disarms. 
So depending on how strong that disarm is, I'm going to have to test it out in the future, but depending on how strong it is, she might get moved up to the S tier. Because I can imagine that being really powerful, but it's all about it's all about getting lucky with the timing. Because if you use her disarm, or if it if it happens to be used, it's not like you can really time it. But if it happens to uh, go off at the right time, then, you know, disarming a hero's... Let's say, for example, you're going up against a Nar. His artifact is going to do 1,300% additional damage. So if you can disarm him right before he uses his ability, and then he doesn't have that fifth skill because his artifact, his hero artifact is disarmed, then that could be very, very effective. But, you know, that's all about getting lucky with timing. And if you don't get lucky with your timing, then it's just going to disarm him, and then his disarm is going to fall off before he even uses his skill, so it's not even really going to take effect, you know? But I guess in the time that Nar would be disarmed, he would lose some dexterity and willpower. I don't even know what those stats do, though. Nobody knows what those stats do yet, I'm pretty sure. The information's just not in the game yet. But yeah, Asa could be very effective, but I'm just not sure about it. So she's in the A tier because I can see her potentially being effective, but I'm just not sure. Roland is probably your best, definitely, actually, your best mobility hero. He's got tons of mobility in his kit. Um... But that's all he's really good at, so I put him in the A tier. You can't jump up to the S tier for sure with only mobility. That's not going to cut it. So, yeah, the heroes that might get bumped up, like I said earlier, Rinna, Galahad, are really good epic heroes that might get bumped up to S tier later on. Um, Zekker might get moved up if AoE is more effective in the late game, which it probably is. Um, Triple A might even be S plus here. His debuffs are just insane. And Willow Howl, I really want to test him more. He's super, super tanky. I can see him just being able to be on the field and just really survive forever. Really, that's the tier list. You'd be better off just taking a closer look at it yourself. Um, like I said, there's this one with all of the uh, color coordination, depending on which grade they got in their category. And then there's this one down here that's way easier to read, in my opinion. Uh, if you want more Game of Legends content, subscribe to my channel because I'll be uploading a lot more. Tell me what you think in the comments down below about the hero tier list. Do you agree with my placements? Do you disagree? Uh, where would you move them? Uh, let me know in the comments down below also which Game of Legends content you want to see next. Do you want to see a fastest way to power up guide? Do you want to see some other type of guide? Uh, just let me know, guys. Let me know. Thanks for watching my video. Have a good one. Peace.